Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Tollard Royal in Wiltshire. But only just the Dorset border is not far away to the south. We're uh, about six miles east of Shaftesbury and 17 miles southwest of Salisbury. And we're going to be walking a five mile route. We'll have a look around the village before heading north uphill along the Wessex Ridgeway up to Wynn Green, the highest point on the Cranbourne Chase, then along a ridge before dropping back through Berwick down to our starting point. And hopefully there'll be lots of interesting things to see along the way. Now I'm filming at the beginning of April. It is a glorious spring day. The sun is out. There's a fair bit of blue sky. It's about seven or eight degrees. It's gradually going to warm up. Should be perfect conditions for walking. So do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car, a little uh, free car park area by the pond, which is at the sort of bottom of the hill in the village, which is just by me here. It really is quite sweet. In fact, I came across uh, an old picture of it on the internet. It hasn't changed that much over the years. OK, well, let's have a little exploration through the village and uh, have a look at the church first. And in front of me here is the Church of St Peter Ad Vernicula, which I believe stands for St Peter in Chains. Now, the earliest record of a church here is uh, in 1291, and the earliest record of its dedication to St. Peter ad Vernicula is 1469. And I was reading that it's one of just 15 churches in England with that uh, particular dedication. And it consists of a nave, north aisle, west tower, chancel and south porch. In the late 15th and early 16th centuries, alterations were made, including the rebuilding of the tower and the addition of the aisle and porch. There was further restoration in the 19th century when the aisle was rebuilt, and I think it's got six bells. Now, I'm filming on Saturday. It's Easter Sunday tomorrow, and I've seen a few people pop in there. I think they're doing preparations for the Easter service tomorrow, so... I may well just pop in and get some photographs because I don't want to disturb uh, anyone. Now, just to the south of the church is King John's house behind uh, that hedge there. Now, originally, there was a hunting lodge here used by King John in early parts of the 13th century. I think King John himself died in 1216. It became a manor house, then a farmhouse, uh, but was remodelled in the 16th and 17th centuries. And I think it was a museum in 1890, but it was put back into being a private house in 1907. And I believe that these days it's operated as a holiday let or a venue for weddings and is run by the Rushmore estate. Now, although the village is known locally as Tollard, the royal bit was added in the 16th century, reflecting the connection with King John back in the 13th century. But it's a very pretty village with some quite gorgeous buildings and cottages and houses. And it actually won uh, Wiltshire's Best Kept Village Award in 2017 and 2018. We're well, just making my way through the village. This is the old primitive Methodist church, built in 1879 and closed in 1957. The King John Inn, built in 1859, although I have seen one source say it was 1885. I think it originally might have been called the Queen's Arms and changed its name to the King John Hotel in 1899. I suspect that's going to be our final destination. What a gorgeous beer garden on the hill there. Yeah, definitely going to finish up here for sure. Well, it certainly is a quite enchanting village. Well, I've made my way back to the pond and now we're going to start heading out into the countryside proper, as it were.
to you. It's one of those really lovely, fresh spring days. Great to be out. Okay, so the first part of the walk, so we're heading northwards. We're actually on a section of the Hardy Way, an old friend of ours. The 220-mile uh, long-distance path that winds its way through Dorset, linking places that have got a connection with the uh, novelist and poet Thomas Hardy. And it starts at Higher Bockhampton, where he was born, and finishes at Stinsford Churchyard, where his heart is buried. <laughs> Well, folks, I think it's going to be one of those days where we're going to be stopping quite a lot just to uh, admire the view. It really is quite beautiful today. And uh, this time of year, so April with the sun, you still get those lovely shadows. Interesting little building down there behind those trees on saddle stones. Um, I wonder if it could be a shooting lodge, I don't know. Just panning round, uh, the finger post in the distance, pointing uphill for our next uh, bit of the walk. Another little stop to admire the view and to catch my breath back. This little section that we're on now is in an estate and uh, there are signs just asking uh, folk to keep their dogs on their leads. Well, just as I make my way along the top of this little ridge, in the far distance on the other side of the valley, you can just about make out a house. And it's called Ashcombe House, and there have been several buildings on the site. The uh, first house was built in 1686. It was demolished and rebuilt in 1750 and then remodelled in 1754. But most of it was demolished again in 1870 and rebuilt. The current house uh, originally was part of the much larger mid 18th century structure. But it was bought by pop legend Madonna and Guy Ritchie in 2002. And Madonna said of it, and I quote, in the summertime, it is the most beautiful place in the world. Well, the house and the 1,124-acre estate was transferred into the sole name of Guy Ritchie in 2009 as part of the divorce settlement uh, with Madonna. And today it's one of the top game bird shooting venues in the country. Ta-da! We made it to the top. We're at a place called Wind Green, the highest point on the Cranbourne Chase. And well, the views from here, oh, it's hard to describe. So that's looking over to Shaftesbury and the very far distance and looking down onto the, the Blackmoor Vale. It uh, really is picture postcard stuff. And this uh, little area is owned by uh, the National Trust. Well, up here at Wind Green, <laughs> again, these views really are quite stunning. There's a, a plinth up here as well, which uh, shows us what we can see. Apparently, Bristol is 40 miles in that direction. And then just to my right, there's this uh, clump of beech trees. And uh, then just over to my right there's a trig point and as regular viewers will know 
Logan and I will have to bag that in the customary fashion. <laughs> some fun going through the beech tree clump there. Now on the other side looking north down into the valley I don't know if you can see down there there's a rather impressive house I might have to get my uh, zoom camera out but that's Fern House or I think it's called Fern Park now and it's a country house and estate owned by the Rothermere family who own the, the Daily Mail. The uh, De Fern family built a first house here back in 1225 and a, a second house was built in 1811, but that was demolished in 1965. The Rothermeres bought the estate in the 1990s, and in 2001, uh, this third house was built. And there's some quite amazing gardens if you look up on an aerial map of the, the whole area. Right, just a, a quick uh, update on the route. Uh, we're going to come off uh, Wynn Green, I'm going to follow that track in front of us, uh, the Cranbourne Droves Way, which is a just over 16 mile long distance path that links the Sarsen Way at Salisbury to the Wessex Ridgeway here at Wynn Green. And so I'm going to follow along the top of that ridge and start our homeward journey. I'm just looking down into the valley below, it really is another beautiful scene. further we go along this track you actually get a much better view of uh, Fern House or Fern Park and even more so that quite magnificent uh, avenue of trees and uh, well I keep going on about these views folks but as far as the eye can see just rolling countryside you just sort of have to stand and sit and take it in and uh, I was talking about those you can really make out the patterns of the trees that they've uh, established in the park there it's quite fascinating well, it looks like there's some sort of beacon up at the top of the hill there probably used for special occasions I suspect things like coronations oh, the sun's gone in outrageous a little pit stop just to well, show you where we've been actually so on that ridge along there was our original going out route the hardy way and then there's the the clump of beech trees at the top and then we've made our way along well the other side of that ridge to the top there and now we're on our homeward journey uh, which is downhill all the way. Well, we're making good progress coming down the side of Berwick Down. Now, if you look at an old map, there's some earthworks roughly about here. There was an Iron Age farmstead that uh, was then taken over 
uh, by a sort of Romano-British settlement. There was a, a Roman road, of course, not far from here, from Badbury Rings to Bath. I think it was here, though, because there are some indentations just on the side. It's just uh, on farmland, private land, but, well, I'm not 100% sure. So if I vaguely waft my hand in this direction and say it's, it's out there somewhere, I'm already thinking about that first pint back at the King John Inn at Tollard Royal. <laughs> Well, folks, we've made it back to the King John Inn at Tollard Royal to end our walk. We hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and to leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. The weather has been glorious and the scenery, well, out of this world. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh, looking forward to this. And it's Chris time. <laughs>